Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to use the cookie game one last time, but we're going to enrich our model so that both players alternate offers until one accepts or all the cookies are gone. This was our extensive form where we had just one offer and a single counteroffer. Remember that if Tommy made a counteroffer, then his mother took away two cookies, thus reducing the total amount they could bargain over. This resulted in a fairer distribution of the resources, where the player getting screwed gets two cookies instead of just one. But now they will have the ability to keep going until all of the cookies are gone. Drawing this out would be a pain, so we're just going to look at it one step at a time. We're still going to use backward induction, so we have to start at the last offer. And if you work it out in your head, Tommy is going to make that last offer to Angelica. And this is a pretty simple subgame if you've watched the previous videos on bargaining, especially the ultimatum game. The equilibrium offers Z equals 1, and they split the cookies. So now we backtrack a step. If Tommy rejects here, then both players are going to get one cookie apiece. And the reason I made that line a little bit longer than normal was because those payoffs came from the subgame on the previous slide. Again, this subgame is pretty simple to solve. In order to do better than one cookie, Angelica must offer Tommy two cookies. He'll accept that as two cookies is more for him than the one that he would have gotten for continuing the game. Angelica does better as well, as she gets two cookies instead of the one. So we use that information to go back another step. And here it looks like x is going to be 3, as 3 is enough to appease Angelica while simultaneously improving Tommy's payoff. So now we take that information and use it to analyze a step previous to that. And the subgame equilibrium offer here is going to be w equals 4, as that appeases Tommy while simultaneously improving Angelica's payoff. Now we go back another step, and if you happen to be following the pattern, then you know that v is going to equal 5. Finally, we arrive back at the first step, and it looks like our equilibrium outcome to the entire game, not just the subgame, but the entire game, is Angelica offering Tommy 6 at the, initial, at the initial node, and Tommy accepting that offer. This should strike you as an interesting result. When we first started analyzing bargaining games, beginning with the ultimatum game, whoever made the first offer made out like a bandit, while the other player got screwed. Now we have a fair division. This was a direct result of the alternating offers bargaining structure and the costly delays that are programmed into the game. As it turns out, this very closely resembles something called Rubenstein bargaining, which is the next thing I'm going to teach you. However, unlike in this model, Rubenstein bargaining involves utility that can be divided into infinitely small divisions. So instead of splitting cookies that have to be whole numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, or 12, the Rubenstein model is more like a pie that can be cut in infinitely many ways. We'll be discussing this type, this type of bargaining in the upcoming videos.